Welcome to the Painting Wizards Workshop. Today you'll be apprenticing with me to learn master level shading techniques. I'll also go over an advanced discussion of color and composition. We'll have plenty of examples of fantasy and wargaming figures to help you with ideas for color schemes and approaches. Let's get started. Believe it or not, your choice of colors is more important than your painting technique. Great painting technique with a clashing color scheme just isn't as appealing as a simple painting technique with thoughtful color choices. These Space Marines are from my five-year-old son's army. He did much of the painting himself with help on the details from me. The technique is very basic, but the overall army looks good because it has a simple, balanced paint scheme and the colors work well together. In general, simple plans and paint schemes are the best and easiest to do. There are three basic guidelines that will help you to select good colors and develop your color and composition sense. The first is tone. Tone refers to how light or dark a color is, that is how much gray or black a color has in it. You can have a light, medium, or dark tone. For example, this thief is painted overall in dark tones for a somber or sinister effect. This angel is done in light tones, which often creates the effect of purity of purpose and nobility. This cleric is a good example of medium tones. Keeping your color tones balanced makes the whole figure look more realistic and harmonious. No single color jumps out at you. They all cooperate to make a single strong effect. This space orc is an example of a rather garish effect. The colors clash and they don't really work well together. The second color guideline is temperature. Some paints look warmer and others look cooler. Warmer paints include reds and yellows or colors that have lots of red or yellow in them. Warmth or coolness does not have to do with how dark or light a color is, but with the specific color shading. This samurai is painted predominantly in warm colors. The cooler colors are blue and white dominated. For example, you could have a deep blue-green or deep blue-purple. This knight is painted in cool colors with a lot of blue and white in them. The third color guideline is working with complementary colors. Complementary colors really like each other. They make each other look good. Yellow has a complementary relationship with purple. Blue has a complementary relationship with orange. Red has a complementary relationship with green. Complementary colors usually look best if one color dominates and the other supports. This explains why goblins and orcs with green skin look good with red eyes. That little dot of red in the eye really makes the green appear brighter and even more green. Often a small amount of orange or orangish yellow will help blue look very nice. Purple looks great with a little yellow or gold near it. The complementary color does not have to be right next to the other color, but they do need to be where they can both be seen at the same time. Some browns and grays are very neutral and don't really affect anything around them. It is really important to have a few colors in this category. If you don't, most of your figures will be just too densely colored and overdone. Here are a couple of other suggestions for combinations that work well together. Blue and gold look very good together and complement one another. Silver and blue look good together, but they generally need to be slightly separated, preferably by black. Otherwise, the silver and blue tend to blend together. Red and gold also look good together, but they also look best if they are separated by a little black. Red and black make a good if somewhat sinister combination. White and either blue, green, or red look great together. Red and purple work well together too. In most cases, avoid using lots of either purple or orange. Once in a while, you can really go to town and put loads of purple on a figure and it will look good, but that is the exception, not the rule. Remember, these are my preferences. The main key to developing a good sense or eye for color is to experiment. I have just thrown a load of information about colors and design at you. If it seems a bit overwhelming, just relax and file it away. Have fun, 
paint some figures, and then review this section again later. After a while, it will start to make more sense. Shading increases the three-dimensional aspect of a figure's sculpting, bringing out the details in a figure more clearly and making a figure look more realistic. Dry brushing is very fast and easy. It's an excellent first shading technique. It will greatly enhance the appearance of your figures. Dry brushing is commonly done over a black prime figure like this skeleton. The black provides shading and outlining. Dip your brush in the paint. Wipe off most of the paint on a piece of newspaper until the brush is rather dry. Then wipe the brush across the grain of the detail that you're painting, not with it. On this skeleton, that means we go vertically down across the ribs, which have horizontal grooves with the bone colored paint. The lighter paint stays in the high spots and the black shows through underneath. This creates a very dramatic look where you can see each of the ivory colored bones outlined by black lines. Dry brushing really wears out your brushes fast, so get a brush you'll use only for dry brushing. This can be one of your older brushes that has lost its point. Drier paint is better than really thin paint for dry brushing. If the paint you have is really thin and watery, you should either let it dry out a bit or choose a different color with thicker paint. The paint is best if even a little tacky. This is an area you will need to experiment with a little and people have personal preferences on how dry they like their paint to be. The most common dry brushing mistake is to put too much paint on the brush. Then you end up filling in the details and totally covering the darker base coat color like this. A great way to start dry brushing is to use it on armor. The simplest way to do armor is to prime the figure black and then dry brush on a metallic steel or silver color. You can create some nice shading by doing dark metallic like gunmetal or chainmail and then brushing over that even more lightly with silver. On your figure, you will have black in the deepest part of the cracks, chainmail on top of that, and then on the very top, silver, so you can see some of all three layers. It looks great. You can do a great paint job on guns, vehicles, and buildings really quickly using dry brushing over a black base coat. Dry brushing works great on flesh tones. This warrior was base coated with medium brown, dry brushed with warrior flesh, and then a light highlighting dry brush of warrior flesh lightened with white was put on last. Simple, fast, and effective. Another dry brush method is to paint a solid base coat 